Welcome to JT and Friends. I'm Veronica. I'm Emma. And I'm Maria. Are you looking for an authentic Japanese experience? I If am. so, <laughs> you've clicked on the right video because today we're going to introduce a variety of destinations from Tokyo and Wakayama that are guaranteed to enrich your Japanese experience. Let's go on an adventure together. But before we embark on our journey, we're first going to learn more about Wakayama's location since it's not as well known as other places in Japan. Ooh. Yes, so Wakayama Prefecture is located in the southwestern part of the Kansai region, uh, very close to popular destinations like Osaka and Nara. I know a lot of you would love to visit those two cities when you come to Japan, so why not add Wakayama to your itinerary? Yeah. Now, there's、uh, two ways to get to Wakayama, either by train or plane. So,、uh, when it comes to trains, it is very easy to get to Wakayama from Shin Osaka Station. As the name suggests, it's located in Osaka, and Shin Osaka Station is a major station with many Shinkansen or bullet trains、um, from, for example, Tokyo, Nagoya, and as you might know, Osaka is very close to Kyoto as well. And from Shin Osaka, there are limited express trains to Wakayama City. Um, and you can also take flights, for example, from Kansai Airport, also located in the Osaka area.、Mm -hmm. And from there, it is、uh, less than an hour actually, either by the train or shuttle bus to Wakayama City. And there is another option, and that is to fly directly into Wakayama's Nanki Shirahama Airport. And the cool thing <laughs> is, from <laughs> Tokyo to Nanki Shirahama Airport, It is just over an hour actually. Oh, oh wow. So, yeah. So,、close. even if you're not in Kansai, it is very easy to get to Wakayama from Tokyo. Very doable.、Mm. There are so many ways to get to Wakayama, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. So, given Wakayama's close proximity to Kyoto and Osaka, it serves as a convenient destination to pair with these tourist hotspots. Together, Tokyo and Wakayama offer a multitude of destinations that embody the essence of Japan. Um, Tokyo represents not only the country's modern side with its vast skyline, but also the past with its historic structures and traditional and cultural activities. In Wakayama, lush nature meets preserved shrines and temples and introduces, offers an immersive introduction to the customs of Japan. So let's first start our journey in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to start with a famous place in Tokyo、mm -hmm. that probably a lot of people watching might have heard of or seen pictures of or have even been to. Guess where?、Uh, there's, there's so many, so many <laughs> so iconic many places. places. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Shibuya! Oh,、uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Great place. So, Shibuya is one of the most energetic districts. I think, and、mm. one of the most famous spots in Shibuya is the Shibuya Scramble Crossing.、Mm. I think many people have maybe seen videos or photos on SNS. Yeah, the busiest crossing in the world. Right? right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. So it was actually launched in 1973 and represents Tokyo's urban buzz.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> and another cool spot in Shibuya is the,、um, it was opened more recently actually in 2019. Is the Shibuya Sky.、Yeah. Have you guys been there?、Mm -hmm. yes. yes. It's cool.、Right? It's really nice. <laughs> so, the 223 meter high rooftop observatory is located on top of the Shibuya Scramble Square. And the 360 degree、uh, um, open air observation deck offers amazing panoramic views of Tokyo from all angles.、Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's amazing. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. And there's a sky edge corner you probably saw in the video that、uh, provides Instagrammable views of the city below. And of course, you can see Shibuya Scramble Crossing as well. Nice. <laughs> and on the、uh, 
Speaking of observation decks, I think, Maria, yes. you might have another cool spot to share with everyone. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about one of my all-time favorite buildings in Tokyo, Ooh. which is the iconic Tokyo Tower. Uh, of course. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. so dressed appropriately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, um, yes, I think also, just like Shibuya, even if you have never been to Tokyo or Japan, you have probably seen Tokyo Tower in advertisements or mm -hmm. movies, music videos mm -hmm. or anime. Yeah. And um, I was wondering, do you girls know, off the top of your head, how high Tokyo Tower is? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, maybe you want to say it together? <laughs> okay, three, three, two, one. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> okay, Same. three, oh. Three, two, one, go. 333 meters. Oh, meters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's correct. Yeah, it's uh, very easy to remember. 333. Three, three. Yep. And uh, actually, um, Tokyo Tower is the world's largest self supported steel tower. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, it was actually um, Japan's tallest structure from its construction in 1958 until 2012. Mm. when it was surpassed by the Tokyo Sky Tree. Ah. <laughs> but nevertheless, um, Tokyo Tower still serves at a, as a broadcast antenna and is also a popular tourist destination because of the two observation desks, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. And there's also a shopping area, lots of mm -hmm. restaurants and an entertainment complex. Um, just recently, they opened Japan's largest esports park. Um, yeah, it's what? basically a blend of the physical and virtual experience wow. and they have lots of cool collaborations with video games and anime going on all the time. That's so cool. Right? Um, so it's not so high, mm. but the cool thing about Tokyo Tower is that it's relocated in the heart of Tokyo and uh, you have a close look at the city. Um, I personally really like looking at the football or soccer field um, right next to the tower. And there's also a so-called skywalk window, which is basically, yeah, a look down window, which is on the ground and you can stand right on it and look down. I'm always scared to walk on it because it might break. <laughs> right, I think everyone has that fear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so definitely not recommended if you're afraid of heights, <laughs> but otherwise it's yeah, very interesting experience. Um, and then the second on the higher deck is at 250 meters and from there you just get a better sense of the city on a grand scale. And on clear days you can even see Tokyo Sky Tree and Mount Fuji oh. in the distance. Yeah, I didn't know you could see Mount Fuji. Yeah, from I didn't know that. Oh, really? uh, yeah. yeah, Tokyo yeah. Tower. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty um, during the day, of course, but also in the evening um, when the sun goes down and all the lights, you know, the city comes to life at night. Um, yes, and uh, obviously both observation decks uh, can be reached via elevator, but there's also the possibility to take a 600 step staircase and I know that you have done it before. Ooh. I did, <laughs> in the heat of summer. <laughs> it wasn't too bad though. Okay, yeah, I guess uh, it's a good workout. Yeah, I only went I'm, down. Uh, <laughs> I took the elevator down. Mm. <laughs> yeah, your choice. And uh, yeah, so close to Tokyo Tower, there's also uh, Shiba Park, which is a lush green park, mm. an oasis in the middle of Tokyo. And it's especially recommended to go in spring because they have cherry blossom trees and also very pretty roses. Ooh. And well, obviously it is a good spot to look at Tokyo Tower from a distance and take pictures with it. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, highly recommended if you come to Tokyo. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. So let's move from the city streets to the water with Ooh. Yakatabune, which is a one of a kind dining experience in Tokyo. So, have you girls done? Well, actually, we did Yakatabune <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> so, never mind that question. Um, so, yeah, Yakatabune are small Japanese entertainment boats that cruise along eastern Tokyo's Sumida River. And they're characterized by their um, traditional design, delicious multi-course meals, mm. and stunning riverside views. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> so their appearance-wise, they are known for their traditional like, exterior. They have mm. like red lanterns mm. out front, and inside they have tatami floors. So it definitely has like a 
traditional feel. Yeah. There's like Japanese decor, traditional Japanese decor. It's really fun. And the meal, the menu often includes, well, typically includes freshly fried tempura, as in the chef fries each piece right before serving it to you. So it's crispy and warm and it's just amazing. I personally love tempura, so yeah. Me too. I quite enjoy that part of the meal. <laughs>、um, they also usually have sashimi and、Sorry. other traditional Japanese dishes that you pair with alcohol or non alcoholic beverage. You're making me hungry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We need to get some sashimi in here. Yeah, tempura. <laughs> so.、Um, As it's cruising, cruising down the river, you get views of the city skyline at night, so glittering along the water and lots of bridges because there's a bunch of illuminated bridges along Sumida River.、Yeah. And it stops at iconic landmarks like Rainbow Bridge and Tokyo Sky Tree.、Mm-hmm. And when you get to these places, the boat invites you to the roof where you have unobstructed views of the city. Um, and it's really beautiful when it's like a nice night and the weather's nice.、Yeah. You have a breeze and you can、yeah. see all the buildings along the water and they reflect, the lights reflect in the water.、Uh-huh. And you can often see other Yakatabune bo- boats along the river. Yeah. yeah. So it's really pretty, especially the red glow of the lanterns、mm. on the water. It's, it's picturesque. It's not romantic. Right? It's very <laughs> romantic. Perfect date place or friend date, anything.、Um, and you can see Takata too. You can.、True. Not quite as well as Sky Tree、yeah. and、oh, Rainbow Bridge, but like、mm-hmm. through the buildings, you get a glimpse of、yeah. Tokyo Tower. <laughs> so it's nice. You see a lot of famous landmarks、yeah. on this cruise.、Um, so, yeah, from the food to the scenery to the ambiance in general, it's a traditional activity that everyone can enjoy. And、sure. yeah, while we're on the topic of traditional activities, I wanted to give a shout out to Asakusa, which、oh. is a region <laughs> relatively close to Tokyo Sky Tree.、Um, it's one of the city's most beloved areas. It's、um, very popular among tourists. Yeah,、mm. yeah and it's, I guess,、uh, people like to visit for its traditional vibes. There's a lot to do there.、Um, and it's one of the most popular places to rent kimono. So, if you're interested in trying on Japan's traditional clothing, we highly recommend doing so in Asakusa. Yes. Yeah. So, I think we could talk about Tokyo for hours. Yeah. <laughs> so true. So, <laughs> so I many think places. It's、mm-hmm. time we move on to Wakayama. Wakayama. With our first destination. Yes. So, the first destination is actually a cemetery. Ooh. <laughs> so,、um, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about Okunoin Cemetery,、um, which is、uh, Japan's largest cemetery at the ancient temple complex of Koyasan. I think a lot of you have heard about Koyasan. I think a lot of tourists would like to go there for temple stays. We're going to talk about those later.、Um, but basically,、uh, Koyasan is one of Japan's most important pilgrimage sites. And the reason for that is that Okunoin is the resting place of Kobo Daishi, also known as Kukai, who was the founder of Shingon Buddhism. And、um, you might think, like, oh, a cemetery, it sounds so scary, and is it okay to walk around,、mm-hmm. right? But actually, it is a really nice walk in nature because you have around 200,000 moss covered tombstones and tons of ancient cedar trees. And it is just, it has a very spiritual, calm、mm-hmm. um, ambience, and it just has a very special energy to it. It's very calm and peaceful.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And、um, you can even take it further and take a night swap.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can do this、uh, with a local guide who speaks English. And、um, on the way, they will give you some information about Buddhist traditions, legends, and stories. It's very interesting. And it looks very pretty too because、um, all the paths are lit with lanterns.、Oh, sounds so nice. Right? I really love moss on like. Me too. Yeah,、mm, just stones yeah. in general. It's so beautiful. Yeah, like yeah. whenever I visit a temple or shrine that is famous for like moss covered stones, etc., it just has. It's, it's so magical. <laughs> Right? Yes, yes,、yeah. I agree.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, but、uh, speaking of Koyasan, I think Anna, you also know a cool spot, right? <laughs> well, actually, I had a great opportunity to stay at a temple that、yes. you, was, you mentioned. <laughs> yeah,、uh, before going there, actually, I didn't know that you could stay at a temple. Did you、oh. guys know this? 
I've never tried it before, but I know it's becoming more and more popular these mm. days. Yeah. 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 I, I've read about it, and when I first read about it, it's something I knew that I wanted to try. So oh. I'm kind of jealous that you got to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's actually 50 temples in Koyasan. Oh, wow. That are, yeah, right? <laughs> A lot. That are classified as Shukubo, which means temple lodging. And Rengejo in, where I stay, that is one of them. Mm. So there was a beautiful Kadesansi dry rock garden surrounded by lotus water lilies sitting next to the temple's main hall wow. where visitors can actually visit twice daily uh, to experience the Buddhist ceremonies including uh, meditation in the evenings and prayers and sutra readings each morning. Oh, that's so cool. Right? Yeah, sounds really nice. <laughs> And you can also experience traditional Buddhist vegetarian cuisine mm. called Shojin Yori. And they use seasonal vegetables and mountain plants and lots of local flavors. Mm. It was very delicious. I tried the breakfast and dinner. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it sounds very nourishing. Yeah, right? Yeah. And very healthy. Right? Sounds like such a, yeah, yeah. It sounds like such a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It was really cool to experience like the Buddhist life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as you saw in the videos, there are beautiful, like gorgeous rooms uh, in the temples, but also very simple rooms where training monks usually stay. And I stayed in one of those rooms. They had really thin walls <laughs> and like one futon, but it was like a very interesting and exciting experience because you can like, I don't know, meditate and like mm. hear birds chirping oh. and you know, just relax. So I definitely recommend it. Yeah, I will make sure to go someday. Yeah, mm, yeah, me too, for sure. So another place we recommend is Nachi Falls, Ooh. which perfectly represents Wakayama's blend of nature and culture. Mm. So with a height of 133 meters, Nachi Falls is, Wak or, no, is Japan's tallest waterfall. Oh, um, 133? Yeah, yeah, 133 wow. meters. Um, and it's long been worshipped by Shinto followers. So for up-close views of this natural monument, you can visit Hiro Shrine's observation deck, which is only 300 yen, super mm. affordable. Um, and you can just bask in the majestic sights. Um, <laughs> and for a symbolic view of Wakayama, like if you Google Wakayama, yeah. this image is what mm -hmm. is going to show mm -hmm. up. It's everywhere. Um, yeah, so <laughs> you can and should visit um, Kumano Nachi Grand Shrine and Nachi San Segantoji Temple. So at this area, you can see the temple's three-storied pagoda with the waterfall in the background. Oh, so pretty. So it's just an absolutely picture-perfect site. Ooh. Yeah. Um, also, this area is a great, it's a prime example of Shinto Buddhism fusion in Japan, since the temple and shrine are located directly next to each other, mm. which is quite rare in Japan. True. So um, this is a, we highly recommend visiting this place. If you're in the area mm. and you can get there, it's one of the best views in Wakayama, I think. Definitely the most yeah. iconic, so yeah. highly recommend going. Um, and yeah, let's continue our spir spiritual journey along a very famous path. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Anna. So the Kumanakodo, probably many people have heard of this name, mm -hmm. yes, is an ancient network of pilgrimage routes that connect Wakayama's regions like uh, Koyasan and Kumano with the neighboring Mie prefecture. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> and in the past they acted as a means for um, people to move between sacred areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are an adventurer, are you guys? Yes, adventurous? yes, <laughs> that's us. <laughs> the um, multi-day hiking tour is recommended. Uh, oh. I don't think I'm an adventurer. No. <laughs> you can but do if it. you just want to experience just um, a little part of one of the routes then the Daimon Zaka route is recommended. Mm. So it's just a one kilometer route oh, near so the cool. Nazi Falls, which Veronica just ah, talked about. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a cobblestone path surrounded by ancient trees. So oh. it's very beautiful. And there um, I rented actually a Heian era costume. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, at Daimon Zaka Chaya Tea House. Mm. They had many different patterns and colors, but I chose really? the red one that you can Ooh. see in the video. That's oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was a very, very hot summer day, like really, really hot. Yeah, how but was that? Actually, it w I felt really comfortable wearing it, and okay. like it wasn't like 
I was sweating mm, or anything. Mm, it was mm. really good. I think it was made for like yeah yeah any that season. Makes yeah. Oh. And um, so I think a lot of people who come to Japan maybe for the first time they try kim like rental renting kimonos. But if you're looking for a slightly different experience, I recommend you rent a Heian era costume because it was such a great experience and I recommend it. Yeah, I mean, I have tried on both kimono and yukata mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. in Japan, but never this Heian no. period costume. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. should definitely try it. You, it. you get a cool hat with a <laughs> net to cover yeah. your face oh. so that like the flies don't come out. Oh, perfect. <laughs> that is very perfect, yes. Especially yeah. since you're walking in a forest. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I guess it comes in all different kinds of sizes. Yeah, so. oh, nice. and for kids as well. Oh, oh cute. Mm. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. So, uh, to wrap it up, um, yeah, as we mentioned at the beginning, Wakayama is very easily accessible from Tokyo. It's just a bit over an hour by plane. Mm -hmm. You should definitely include it in your next Japan itinerary or I'm maybe sure. in your yeah, Japan round trip or even when you're exploring the Kansai region. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So, we hope you enjoyed this video and wrote down some destinations for your next trip to Japan. So again, <laughs> I was so, writing it down. Yeah, I saw out of the corner of my eye. Um, so again, a combined Tokyo Wakayama trip offers the perfect blend of um, modernity, culture, history, and nature, resulting in a trip that really captures the spirit of Japan. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about Wakayama and Tokyo, we recommend checking out the TripAdvisor page in the description. We will link it, so check it out. Yes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.